Hi guys. So today I would like to talk about multidimensional uh, Feynman CAC theorem. So we're going to consider uh, processes which are driven by two or more Brown in motions. Okay. For our discussion today, let's assume that we have a two dimensional Brown in motion given by WT. And this basically is a vector of W1T, W2T. Okay. Where W1T, W2T are basically single dimensional Brown in motion and they are independent of one another. Okay. Now let's assume that we have two processes x1 and x2 which are driven by this two dimensional brown in motion so let me write down the differential equation for that so dx1 of t is equal to some function beta 1 of t x1 t x2 t dt plus gamma 1 1 t x1 of t x2 t dw 1 t plus gamma 1 2 t 1 t still t dw 2 t okay likewise let me write down the differential for the second process dx 2 t is equal to beta 2 t comma x 1 t comma x 2 t dt plus gamma 2 1 t x 1 t comma x 2 t d w 1 t plus gamma 2 2 t x 1 t x 2 t d w 2 t where I, as I just said w 1 w 2 basically are independent brown and motions now beta 1, gamma 1, 1, gamma 1, 2, gamma 2, 1, gamma 2, 2 and beta 2 basically are non-random functions of time and two variables let's say x1 and x2. Okay. So this basically is the differential equation for these two processes and let's assume that we are given some initial condition that x1 at time t is equal to x1, x2 at time t is equal to x2. Okay. So with this initial condition, we can basically find a solution to these two differential equations and we'll get, let's assume we'll get the solution as x1t and x2t. This would be the solution with this initial condition and this differential equation. And because from the right hand side, we can see that these two processes are either driven by Brownian motions or by the process themselves. Okay, because these can be, all these functions can be functions of time and x1 and x2. Okay, so on the right hand side, we can see that x1 can be driven by either these two brown in motions and the process themselves. It's, it's going to either have x1, x2 on the right hand side and these two brown in motions. Similarly, x2 on the right hand side would have these two brown in motion driving it and any of these functions can also have x1, x2. So basically these processes are driven by these two brown in motions and by processes themselves okay they, and we've actually talked about this before in such a case the solution basically is a Markov so this basically is a Markov okay because the processes are driven either by brown in motion or by themselves hence basically we know that the solution of these differential equations with these initial conditions would be a Markov okay now let's assume that we have some Borel measurable function H okay and we want to figure out what is the expected value of function of x1 t x2 capital T okay with this initial condition so if you remember previously we had notated uh, we have given this notation t comma x1 comma x2 so this basically says we want to figure out expected value of a function of x1 t and x2 t okay where x1 t and x2 t is basically solution on these two differential equations with this initial condition so the, this basically signifies the initial condition okay and if you remember our discussion in that lecture we said that this basically expectation would be another function g of time and the initial condition x1 and x2 okay so this basically expected value would be a function of time 
and this initial value okay so very similar to what we already discussed when we were discussing uh, uh, Feynman CAC uh, theorem but uh, the single dimensional Feynman CAC theorem the same theory basically applies here we have two differential equations driven by two Brownian motions and on the right hand side these functions are allowed to be functions of time or x1 x2 that time when we were discussing uh, Feynman CAC we basically had one single Brownian motion and these functions could be functions of time and x1 because we didn't have an x2 process then okay and we said that the solution was a Markov similarly here it's going to be a Markov and if you wanted to compute this expectation this would be a function of time and, and the initial condition x1 and x2 then further we said that if now we wanted to calculate expected value of h the same function uh, and x1 t comma x2 t given information at time t so you want to basically figure out conditional expectation of this function then we said basically all we need to do is we basically need to substitute instead of x1 x2 the random variables so we'll get x1 t comma x2 t right so same thing applies here as well if you want to figure out the conditional expectation of a function of these two uh, random variables then basically we get a function of t x1 x2 and this basically also means that the process is a Markov okay because this expectation condition on information at time t only depends on the value of process at time t it doesn't depend on the value of the process before time t okay that basically signifies that the process together is a Markov okay so same as when we were talking about the single dimensional Feynman CAC the same uh, extension basically applies to multi-dimensional also and here basically you're taking a conditional expectation of this function and all I'm saying is basically it's going to be a function of time and x1 and x2 thereby this basically shows that the process together is a Markov okay now what I want to do is if you remember I want to just basically uh, you know from the previous uh, lecture when we were talking about single dimensional Feynman CAC I want to figure out what is um, a martingale here okay so I want to identify a martingale and then once I identify the martingale basically I need to take the differential of that martingale and set the dt term equals to zero okay that would give me a partial differential equation the same thing I'm going to do here I'm going to first show you that this is a martingale okay and if this is a martingale then I can take the differential of this and I can set the dt term equals to zero and I'll get my partial differential equation so let's do that 